This is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast, where CEOs, senior leaders, and C-suite executives share their advice. It's six questions in nine minutes because the best leaders know how to share their ideas concisely and quickly. Let's jump right in. Question number one, in a few sentences, please tell us who you are and what you do. All right, my name is Winslow Crockwell. I'm a technology leader with over 20 years of experience, currently serving as an APP of Application and Development for a Credit Union. Oh my goodness. So 20 years, my guess is you've learned maybe one or two things you're going to share with us today. Without question. <laughs> well, that's great. So let's hop in then. What would be the best thing about leading people through change? You know, you start to think about the world today. It seems like change is that one constant, right? Absolutely. So what's the best thing about leading people through that? I think the best thing for me about leading people through change is watching them grow. Mm. Change is inevitable. It's occurring all around us. There's no way to stop it. And so the question becomes, how do you harness the energy? How do you um, teach people to grow with it? And in technology, how do you teach people to lead growth uh, through organizations? And so watching people grow is the sweet spot for me. And I would imagine teaching people to lead growth is a whole nother element of development beyond just even the change management component. <laughs> well, and that's what's good about, you know, I, I think, having 20 plus years experience, I've done literally thousands of projects. So I've kind of learned the guardrails. I, I understand that we're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. It is gonna happen and it's just a function of how. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the how is there, there are lots of things that we can do to, to guide folks and, and walk through the process in a way that ensures our success. But the key component really is people growing into the moment and learning how to be calm and collected and work through problems in reasonable ways and help each other. Uh, and on the other end of many complex projects, you have teams that feel like, you know what, we can do anything. And that's because they grow. And that's the, that is truly the sweet spot. John Kennedy would be proud, right? Thinking about <laughs> the, right. the call to go to the moon, but not really sure how they were going to get there. You know, you remind me a lot of that right there. 100%. We do it because it's hard. Mm -hmm. So what piece of advice would you give to other leaders about implementing change then with that in mind? Uh, I think make sure that every risk that you take has a corresponding benefit. So think about how you manage your risk profiles and make sure that there's a benefit associated with each one of them so that you, you have guardrails, you have ways of protecting the business and your customers and your teams from making uh, self-inflicted wounds. When, when there's a risk with no benefit, you really have to think twice about, about executing. Um, so that, that would be, that'd be a guardrail I'd say comes in real handy. And there are, I could think of a lot of examples, kind of the low hanging fruit is change control. You know, you make changes during the day when your company's in business and you have thousands of people on the computer. No, you don't do that. Right. <laughs> that's a, that's a risk without a benefit. You do it at midnight. So when there's a hiccup, you can recover without affecting your customers or your internal teams. So, uh, Make sure every risk that you take has a corresponding benefit. I love that because I mean it's so simple. We talk about risk reward, you know, trade offs all the time. But you know, your example is perfect because how many times do we take unnecessary risks um, that don't necessarily have that reward factor attached to them? So. And guess and, and the time that you end up spending recovering from that <laughs> and. And then recovering your reputation. But anyway, go, go ahead. opportunity cost galore, right there. Yeah, exactly. So it's interesting, you know, um, especially during this time period, I've been hearing a lot from leaders that they've been struggling with this whole how to keep teams engaged remotely, right? That they don't have the benefit anymore of doing the walk by leadership and, uh, you know, bumping into people at the water cooler, overhearing them on the phones. And so they're, you know, now they're starting to drive teams crazy by this over check in and really making sure in some cases I'm even hearing the word micromanagement. You know, I'm yeah. curious, what, what are you seeing? What are your thoughts on that? How has that been working in your world? Yeah, so uh, I've actually managed multinational teams before and a number of teams that were within the continental United States, but not anywhere near me. And uh, what I've learned, especially about technology teams, because technology people in our business tend to be 
uh, bright and motivated because our business is not easy. It's not for everybody. Um, so the answer that I've come up with that works really well for me is number one, know what your objectives are. Be very clear about what it is you're trying to accomplish with your respective teams. Communicate your objectives clearly and ensure that there's alignment uh, across your team. And then to the point that you made earlier, I made a note to myself to remind people, don't micromanage. Just because people aren't, if, if you're managing your work so that the only way you know that it's getting done is by you looking at them, you've got a bigger problem. Um, you know, don't micromanage them, let them, and especially in a pandemic when people, they've got to get their kids to school and they need their, uh, their ancillary things going on, allow them to be human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, measure your results at milestones that allow you to help them recover. You know, don't check in on your team the day that something is due. Check in, in frequently enough so that you can help them that if they've gone south or they've got a blocker or they've, something's not working correctly, you can then as a leader find ways to help them through that. So I'd say, you know, definitely have milestones that you, where you measure how we're tracking and, uh, and coach them, to coach the teams to success. That's really your job is making sure that they're successful not the other way around. I love this Winslow because you're putting all the responsibility on the leader, right? And on the manager. Which is where it should be. <laughs> That's where it should be. That's right. That's right. I really love that those that philosophy and those strategies. Um, you know, so so that leads me perfectly into question number five, which is what daily practice do you think is most important to you as a leader? Well, along the same lines as what we just talked about, every day I review my short term high value targets. Uh, and so that means where am I in the continuum of the work that I'm doing? And I align with my teams. I actually have daily standups. They're short. Uh, they're not very long. And I really look for blockers and ways that I can contribute. Um, but we're always aligned on where we are on the things that are very important in the short term. Uh, and then I get out of their way and I help in any way that I can. I'm curious how you define short term. Is that a year or is that a quarter? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, for me, short term means, well, so that, that's actually an excellent question because <laughs> some of my projects are projects that need to get done in the next two weeks, projects that need to get done in the next quarter, as is the case with many people and some in the year. So the question on the table is, well, what are we working on now? And so I have a project that I'm working on now that's due in two weeks. And so in this case, I'm talking about that. But I will say to you that if I was talking about a longer term project, it wouldn't change the narrative. Mm -hmm. The question's still the same. Where are you? So it could be that we're in discovery and we're still learning about things. We're asking questions. So that's where we are. And can we align on that with our team? Can we align that we're in discovery? Do we think we know everything we need to know, mm -hmm. et cetera? So the, the narrative doesn't really change depending on the, you know, the length of the project. The, when, you're, when you are reviewing your short-term uh, high-value targets, it's where am I right now relative to what's expected of me? And that short-term definition might change based on what you're looking at. 100%. That's awesome. So in one minute for me, answer, what are other successful business leaders like yourself should be on the podcast? Who else will be listening to, Winslow? Uh, I, I will tell you that um, I was thinking about, uh, I actually really liked Harvard Business Review. I think I get a lot out of that. Yeah. Um, and so I would, yeah, I would say, you know, you're never going to go wrong to spend some time reading any of the Harvard Business Review material. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, I think I actually really appreciate the leadership of Kathy Duvall, who's my the current the CEO of the company I currently work for. And the reason I'm mentioning her is because she's I've seen her navigate through this minefield of the pandemic, and we actually had a core conversion during the pandemic, we're the first company uh, ever to do a core conversion remotely, 100%. Wow. And, you know, if you're the CEO of a company that's in the middle of that kind of change under these circumstances, there's a lot of ways you can handle it. And I think she handled, she was, she handled it in an exceptional way. So she's definitely on my short list. Um, 
Belinda Fisher uh, in Houston, Texas at JSC CU is a leadership expert. Uh, I really have had the pleasure of sitting down with her a couple of times as a colleague, uh, but she is um, she's really on the cutting edge of leadership technology. Uh, and then Kieran Amiri at a vice president of Connecta IT infrastructure and operations is uh, I think one of the up and coming shining stars, not only in the credit union business, but in technology. That's incredible. I'm, I know that, um, thank you for all the insights and I, I always encourage the audience to go out and research those folks and you know see what they have to offer. Um, but it's been really a pleasure to have you on the show, Winslow. And I just love all the ideas that you shared. I'm curious if somebody wanted to reach out and meet you or introduce themselves, how might they go about that? Oh, they can look me up on LinkedIn, Winslow Crockwell. I'm, I'm there and uh, easily accessible. That's awesome. Well, audience members know what to do. They know your link's going to be right below the video. So they'll be sure to do that if they have any questions. Um, but again, it was such a pleasure to have you on the show. I do hope you come back and join us again, maybe next season. And Absolutely. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And uh, thank you for doing this. Of course. And this is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast. For more ideas and insights, please do go check us out at www.concilioteam.com. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care. Cheers.